Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. We'll start with the headlines. The Financial Affairs and Energy Resources Council in its seventh meeting decides to go forward with the procedures of approving the budget for the fiscal year 2018. Oman Forum discusses enabling small and medium-sized enterprises and private sector employment challenges. And the Tender Board awards a host of projects and additional works complementary to development and service projects. Those are the headlines and now for the news in details. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of condolences to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, on the death of Her Royal Highness Princess Al Anud bint Mutab bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Financial Affairs and Energy Resources Council has decided to go forward with the procedures of approving the budget of the fiscal year 2018 after the Council reviewed the reports of the Shura and State Councils on the draft budget. The Council stressed in its seventh meeting the necessity of applying the procedures for rationalizing expenditure and uplifting the efficiency and diversification income resources. Within the framework of the following up the state's financial and economic developments, the Council reviewed the reports of the state's financial centers until the end of November of the current year, including financial indices and the actual status of the oil price and revenues, as well as the expenditure levels and actual deficit. It was presided over by His Excellency Darwish bin Ismail bin Ali al Bluji, Minister Responsible for Financial Affairs and Deputy Chairman of the Financial Affairs and Energy Resources Council. Enabling small and medium-sized enterprises and employment challenges in the private sector topped discussions of Oman Forum meeting for 2017, which was held in the Governorate of Muscat. The forum, in its fifth edition this year, was organized by Business and Economy magazine and aims to strengthen efforts exerted to uplift performance of small and medium-sized enterprises and double their contribution in the Sultanate's gross domestic product. The forum included a number of work papers on SMEs and the importance of facilitating administrative procedures and technical services for entrepreneurs as well as providing good work environment for them. It dwelt on challenges being faced by the entrepreneurs like greeting, uh, getting loans from commercial banks. It as well discussed the need to overcome challenges being faced by the private sector in order to provide 25,000 jobs as per the Council of Ministers decision. The Tender Board awarded a host of projects and additional works complementary for development and services projects of a number of fields with more than 23.7 million Omani Reals. They were for consultancy services, for designing and supervising the project of constructing the building for the Omani National Center of Hematology and Stem Cells Transplant in the Sultan Qaboos University. In addition to importing and installing unified devices for Muscat International Airport and Salala Airport, as well as other regional airports, besides providing services of supplying, feeding and cleaning of a number of hospitals and health complexes in, the, in different governorates of the Sultanate. It was presided over by His Excellency Dr. Rashid bin Saf al Harabi, Chairman of the Tender Board. The 8th International Conference of Banking and Islamic Finance discussed the dangers, challenges and management of banking sector. A number of experts, academics as well as policymakers took part in the event and it aims to shed light on the contribution of Islamic banks and financial stability within the framework of the latest legal developments. The conference also reviewed topics related to securities markets, governance and the current economic issues. The conference was presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Nasser bin Hilal Mawali, Chairman of the State's Financial and Administrative Audit Institution. A factory in Erbil in Iraq's northern Kurdish region produces about 130 tons of metal bars a day, all from recycled scrap metal. 80% of their supply currently comes from Mosul, where the fighting between Iraqi forces and Daesh group militants earlier this year reduced entire neighborhoods to rubble. Long lines of lorries bring the scrap metal to the factory every day, 
where they are melted down and reprocessed into metal bars and rods. The products are then sold to building contractors in Iraq, ultimately assisting in the rebuilding of Mosul itself. This company has to pay about 2,000 US dollars a truck to get through the militia checkpoints that line the road between the Kurdish region and Baghdad. With about 30 tons of metal a truck that odds nearly to 70 US dollars a ton to the company's costs. Still hundreds of thousands of scrap metal is getting repurposed in this way. Christine Lagarde of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has said that in the face of Brexit, the more the UK's economy will be open to trade in general, the more productivity and growth will improve. Speaking in London today, Lagarde said their forecast for growth in the UK for 2017 was 1.6%, down from 2.3% in 2015. She was asked by reporters whether IMF predictions of the post-Brexit UK were too pessimistic, to which she replied that the risks they had outlined were being rolled out as we speak, including decreasing growth, investment and disposable income. Lagarde warned against Brexit negotiations dragging on and advised that a good trade agreement that is mutually beneficial would be in everybody's best interest. Uh, the more likely it is that productivity will go up. And that a group of Muslim youths are discussing the importance of self-esteem, balance and life planning at a workshop in the city of Perugia in central Italy. A lively conversation ensues, presenting the young men and women with an opportunity to tackle issues of personal and spiritual growth within the Islamic faith. They are all members of the local branch of Giovanni Muslimani d'Italia, Young Muslims of Italy, an association that caters and connects second-generation Muslims in Italy. It fosters the education and engagement of young Muslims within the civil society by prompting, by prompting them to be socially active in Italy's culture, social and economic life. Founded by a group of Islamic faithfuls in Milan 16 years ago, the Young Muslims of Italy has now spread throughout the Italian territory. It includes 1,500 active members between 14 and 30 years of age, boasting 41 branches from north to south. The majority of young Muslims of Italy members are Italian citizens whose parents immigrated from the countries like Morocco, Egypt, Syria, Ghana, Nigeria or Bosnia. Two people were reportedly killed after a fire in a cooking gas factory in the border town of Birguan in Nepal today. Explosions of cooking gas cylinders and huge flames hampered the rescue works and it took nine hours to bring the fire under control. Rescue teams from the Nepalese army were called in to help tackle the fire. Two firefighters were sus who sustained injuries in the incident were airlifted to the capital Kathmandu for treatment. The police evacuated settlements near the ga gas plant. And still to come in our news bulletin. As part of celebrations of the World Arabic Language Day, a seminar titled Investment in Arabic Language was held in Salada. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. The Public Authority for Craft Industries confirmed that it is due to launch initiatives to develop the craft sector in various governorates of the Sultanate, which came during the third meeting of the Board of Directors of the Authority. It also discussed the results of the study related to obstacles facing the craft product, as well as the work process in a number of projects and initiatives achieved recently. It approved a number of decisions for developing them and keeping their continuity. It was presided over by Her Excellency Sheikh Aisha bin Khalfan Siabiya, Chairperson of the Public Authority for Craft Industries. Within the framework of enhancing the economic cooperation between the Sultanate and the European Union countries, the group of Friends of Oman in the European Parliament visited the Special Economic Zone at Dukum to review the projects being implemented and investment opportunities available there. 
Her Excellency Ramona Nicole Manesqua, Chairperson of the European Parliament, expressed her admiration for the Sultanate's efforts to diversify its economy and the growth witnessed by CISAD. His Excellency Yahya bin Saeed al-Jabri, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Zone Authority, stressed that the facilitation provided for investors, besides the distinguished geographical location of the zone, contributed in diversifying the potentials before the companies wishing to invest there. Coinciding with the Armed Forces Day, the Royal Army of Oman celebrated the graduation of two courses of university and cadet officers for Sultan Qaboos Military College during a ceremony held at Maaskar al murtafa under the auspices of His Excellency Nasser bin Hamoud al-Kindi, Secretary General of the Royal Court Affairs. During the ceremony, the graduates performed a military salute and then they staged a military parade by marching in slow motion, accompanied with the RAO musical band. Then the chief guest distributed appreciation certificates to the distinguished graduates at various activities and competitions. And after that, the graduates chanted the RAO national anthem, sorry, the RAO anthem, took the oath of loyalty and chanted thrice, long live His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. At Sultan Qaboos Military College, Major General Matar bin Salim bin Rashid al Blushi, Commander of the Royal Army of Oman, handed over diploma certificates in the field of military sciences to cadet officers. He also submitted appreciation prizes to top officers of cadet officers round and university officers round. The Commander of the Royal Army of Oman congratulated the graduate officers for the Royal Trust from the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces urging them to exert efforts and devotion to fulfill their noble tasks. The Royal Navy of Oman has implemented today the main phase of joint naval exercise Nasim al-Bahar with the participation of a group of vessels affiliated to the Navy of India and assisting them by, with fighter jets from the Royal Air Force of Oman. The exercise came within the annual training plans adopted by the RNO, leadership and exchange expertise plans with navies of friendly countries to keep up the readiness levels of the Royal Navy of Oman's fleet and their personnel in various naval specializations and the national tasks designated to them. The Director General of Housing in the Governorate of North Sharqiya held a ceremony to mark the end of handing of 38 housing units for beneficiaries of the project in the area of Al Hawiya in the Wilaya of Bidiya. The project, which was built at an area of 75,000 square meters, cost 1.15 million Omani Rials. It came within the projects implemented by the Ministry of Housing in various governorates and serving the community. On the back of camels, the desert caravan called Hida started its second journey with a traditional Bedouin send-off in the Wilaya of Bidiya. The caravan aims to highlight Oman's cultural, historical and touristic potentials in general and nomadic life features in particular. The four-day journey will cross around 50 kilometers inside the desert with the participation of 16 travelers, including employees from BIA, the Oman Environmental Services holding company. The caravan witnessed a cultural activities related to traditional arts, desert traditions and customs during its departure. Dukum refinely organized a poetic evening in the governorate of Wustla as part of its community responsibility. The event aimed to encourage talented youths in the field of poetry. It was also attended by a number of well-known poets from inside and outside the Sultanate. As part of celebrations of the World Arabic Language Day, Dar al-Kitab Public Library in Salala organized a seminar titled Investment in the Arabic Language. During the seminar, the experience of Zahra al Aufiya, who won the Sultan Qaboos Award for Voluntary Work in the field of Holy Qur'an's education, was highlighted. The seminar also included work papers on Arab language and its importance in the fields of educational and scientific fields.
And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning over the governorates of Dakhiliya, Boremi and Wusta, as well as the coastal areas of the Sea of Oman. Winds will be northerly to northwesterly light to moderate and seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The Financial Affairs and Energy Resources Council in its seventh meeting decides to go forward to the procedures of approving the budget of the fiscal year 2018. Oman Forum discusses enabling small and medium-sized enterprises and private sector employment challenges. And the Tender Board awards a host of projects and additional works complementary to development and services projects. With that, we come to an end to tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, good night.